Cliff Church this morning? Yeah. Man, I just feel good. That was a good worship. That was some good, some good time in the work. I just want to take the time right now to, to thank Michelle Sink for stepping in the gap for us. Let's give her a hand. Brad Member on hiatus. And we look forward to that return. Amen. Amen. Um, today is a day that I've been really looking forward to for probably like four or five months. I mean, I've really been looking forward to this day. And it's Vision Sunday. Vision Sunday is, is it's nothing magical. It's nothing like there's no celebration or nothing like that. It's just something that we are gathered here together to see what God's purpose is, to see what the future plans are. And it, like I said, it's not a national holiday or anything, but it's just it's just me getting really excited. Okay, that's just really what it is. I want to be honest with you. It's just me getting really pumped about what's going on here at Overflow Church. Vision or future planning is one of those times in life I feel like we should all feel excited about. How many people make plans? You, you know, you make plans. You, maybe you've made your weekly plans. Some, how many people just do stuff on the fly? God bless you. You know, you just do, do stuff on the fly. You got to do what you got to do. God bless you. But today, we're not talking about that. There's a place for that. But there's also a place for planning and vision. It's a time of newness. We, we've been talking for the last month about a series called A Fresh Start. It's time for a fresh start for our church. Last year, when we was holding services right here for the very first time. You know, we've been here for a little bit over a year now. And, you know, we saw the new vision and we saw the community here and welcome. We came here with a purpose and a plan. And I believe that vision and that purpose has succeeded. Amen? How many people have come to church here in the past year? Just, man, that's, that's amazing in itself. God bless you and thank you so much for being here and being a part of the family. But I want to reaffirm today some of the promises that God makes to us through a history lesson, through a lesson that, that God has shown us. And if we really pay attention, we're, we're really going to say, uh, we're really going to see what God has, was planning. You know, he always has a plan. God is the God of order. Everyone say order. order. He's the God of order. He's the God of planning. He's, he does things to a purpose. He sent his son at a certain time for a purpose and he'll come back another time. For a purpose. I want everyone to take your Bible and turn to the book of, ready for this one? Habakkuk. Go to the book of Habakkuk. And if you, you know, I'm not talking about Habakkuk. I'm talking about Habakkuk. Uh, you know, you can talk about Habakkuk later. But Habakkuk. If you're not familiar with Habakkuk, you go to the New Testament. And I want you to go back like five books. Alright? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Alright? That's how you say it in the Greek. All right. Habakkuk was a guy who was a prophet. This was a man who, to be honest with you, was just frustrated. How many people have ever just been frustrated? How many people are frustrated right now? God bless you. You're just plain frustrated. And sometimes, whether you like to admit it or not, Christ followers get frustrated at God. You're just mad at God. You don't understand why things happen like they do. You don't understand if there is a plan and a purpose somewhere, you don't get it. I don't understand. Sometimes, and I'm not ashamed to admit this or say this, but I've asked God why before. Why did this happen to this person? Why did this happen to me? I don't understand. God, why would you allow good, bad things to happen to good people? I don't understand. Sometimes we get our, our cart before the horse. I want to make sure you know what I'm talking about today. Habakkuk was living in a time period 600 years before Christ. Habakkuk lived in a time period where the Babylonian people came in and took over Jerusalem, took over Israel, and they occupied it. And we'll say occupy. They occupied God's land. They occupied God's people. Habakkuk was ticked. He didn't understand. God, I thought we were your people. God, I know that you've called me to be a prophet. I know you've called me to be a, a light in a dark place. But I just don't understand. Why are these things happening? Year after year, terrible oppression. This man became very frustrated. And not only was this, was this a, a, just not a month or a week. This was years. And so the frustration builds. Sometimes when we put up with something long enough, we just say, forget it, God. 
uh, whatever. And we wash our hands of it. But God says, no. Stay the course. The book starts with chapter 1 with a very frustrated prayer. Habakkuk just prays this frustrating prayer to God. Why don't you see what's happening, God? I don't understand. And then all of a sudden, God responds in the only way God can. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. It says this. I will, this is the words of Habakkuk. I will climb to my watchtower and stand at my guard post there. I will wait. And we'll say wait. wait. Wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. So he's standing there. Imagine this. Your mind. I'm standing right here, God. And I'm not going anywhere until you tell me an answer. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to cry. Okay? I'm standing right here. You ever know the kids like that? I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> And it says this, the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message, correct message to others. The vision is for the future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that vision. Lord, we thank you that our time is not your time. Even though we don't understand some things that go on in our life, but we understand if you make the vision clear, and you make the vision plain, we will understand. And we will come to coast with your timing. Lord, let that be the foundation of today's message. Lord, let that be the foundation today that we are here to understand your purpose, let it be the foundation that it comes in your timing and not ours. Lord, throughout this whole 2017 year, let us remember that. Lord, help us to soak in the knowledge that you have for us today. And let us be excited about what the future holds. We love you today in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Although Habakkuk's time is far different from our own, we still seek the vision of God. Not the vision of ourselves. Not what we have planned out, or what our family, or what our work, or what our, whatever we did, but God's vision. That's what's most important in life. I don't care where you are standing. I don't care where you're at in life. If you're at the most, the, the best time in your whole life, you love it, or if you're at the worst, it doesn't matter. God's plan is better. We still need Him to answer prayers. We still need Him to show us what He needs us to do. We still need Him to do all these things. But he gives us a clear and a clear vision so we can execute that vision. Jermaine, come on up here. I can't come up to you. When God said to Habakkuk, write it plainly on tablets, we're going to copy that. We're going to write it plainly. This is the word that God has given me for 2017. Roll it out, fellas, like a scroll. <laughs> the word that God has given me is purpose. Purpose. Everyone say purpose. purpose. Uh, can I get a hand for the banner? Aaron made that. <laughs> if we write it plainly where we can see it, if we write it plainly where it's always in our face, we'll never forget this day. We'll never forget the day that God gave us this word, our purpose. And we're going to banner it up on the wall. We're going to put it on the wall or put it over here on the wall put it somewhere. But there's our banner. This is what's going to stare us at the face for 2017. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Purpose. For Overflow Church, that's the specific word. Have you ever thought to yourself, what's my purpose in life? Have you ever thought to yourself, why am I even here? Well, God called you out for a reason. And God created you for a specific reason. I believe that. He has given you a purpose. He's given you a plan. And that means us as individuals too. But it means corporately. It means that He's given us a purpose. Well, what is that purpose today? This is what God has called us to be a specific purpose. It's my position today to clarify and define that purpose. And I'm glad to do it. That purpose is to continue to make disciples. To broaden the mission and to establish deeper roots in the community. As you can see, our nice pie chart that Aaron also created. <laughs> community, mission, 
and disciples. All of those little pie pieces. I like to think it's a pizza. I should have done that. I should have done a pizza. Marcos. All right. Um, <laughs> but it's all pointing toward the middle. It's all pointing toward the purpose. Our purpose is to make disciples for Christ. Our purpose is to be better in this community. And our purpose is to define our mission statement here. I have asked each individual uh, head of ministries to come and to share a little bit about their purpose. You know, we have an awesome youth program here at Overflow Church. <coughs> Jermaine and Amber lead that. We have an awesome kids ministry with Splash Kids. That means every Sunday while you're in here learning about God, they're in there learning about God. Even the nursery, for crying out loud, has a, has a purpose and a plan. And we want to start those kids off right. It doesn't matter if they're one day old or 100. It doesn't matter. We have a purpose. Amen? So what I want to do right now, I want to ask Jermaine to come on up. Jermaine, come on. Give Jermaine a hand again as he comes up. I want Jermaine to, Jermaine directs our youth group along with Amber, and he's going to share a little bit about the vision of the Edge Youth Group in 2017. Thank you, Brian. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Jermaine, my wife Amber and I, uh, we lead the, the youth here. Um, the Edge is, and I've got some notes here, because if not, I'm just going to babble, and y'all don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Uh, the Edge is founded on the idea of bringing teenage children, starting grade six, all the way up through college, to the edge of adulthood. Um, how many of you guys can agree that outside those doors, this world is, is just an absolute mess? Um, you know, you've got... All this technology with the internet pretty much in our pocket, uh, social media, social division, mass killings, uh, racism, you know, all the list goes on. Um, all of these things have a huge impact on all of us. And I think we can all agree that it's hard to go out there and face these things, you know, in our daily lives and continue on as a Christian. Um, while we as parents do our best to censor our children from these things, it is inevitable that we will experience some of these things, if not all of them. Um, Amber and I feel led to help teach our youth and give them the knowledge needed to address these issues and problems of the world, not to mention give them a base uh, for life as a Christian. Um, and so because of that, we've adopted somewhat of a mission statement. Our mission as the Edge is to make a Christ-like difference in the next generation of leaders and influences in the world, to teach them how to grow in their faith while bringing others from different walks of Christ to life. Um, I read an article not long ago, um, uh, and it was a, a group of people did a study on the millennial generation. They concluded that 59% of millennials who grow up in church end up walking away. So that's six out of 10 people don't come back next week. Um, you know, that's, I'm gonna admit it's highly unlikely to happen here because we're just that good. But, uh, <laughs> um, another 55% uh, of the whole millennial generation um, is unchurched. Um, so I mean, that's a little more than half of our youth are not in church right now. And they're dealing with these issues with, with uh, the society pretty much telling them how to address it. Um, you know, and you have to remember that these are our future leaders, our doctors, our servicemen, uh, service women, and I mean, pretty much all the professions that we count on, on the daily. Uh, I was at youth camp not long ago. Um, and the speaker was talking about him having a procedure done. He was having some kind of surgery. And he made the comment that um, the doctor graduated from a Christian school. And one of the people in the audience questioned why he would want a doctor from a Christian school versus an esteemed college like Duke. Um, and the speaker replied that he would much rather have a doctor who spent the night before praying for a steady hand and a clear mind than one who spent the night throwing back a few drinks. Now, don't get me wrong, Duke's a really good you know, school, and so are pretty much all these other schools. I mean, these doctors go to school forever. Uh, but, and I'm not saying that they're all a bunch of drunks, but there's just something about a praying man. So, in order for us to, to combat those statistics and to get more youth in here, I'm gonna need everybody's help. You know, I need the, the parents, you know, invite your friends and family who have teens. Um, uh, there, you know, on Thursday nights, with the exception of three, maybe four, every one of these seats are empty. Um, 
you know, we have a great vision for these youth. We want to see this place packed. We want to um, make a difference in the community, bring God back into our schools, and give back to those in need. We're very passionate and excited to see what God does in this church and youth group. So I ask that you guys join us every day in prayer. You know, pray for uh, for Juan Amber and I to, 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 to have the courage to keep on doing this. Um, uh, pray for opportunities. You know, we need we need chances to be able to get into the schools and invite youth and to, to be able to talk to them. Um, and that way we have a chance to to help these these young adults and, and children um, develop a relationship with God. That's all I can. Not only do they need prayer for the youth group, but they need prayer for one thing. Amber is pregnant. Let's give her a hand. Right now. Congrats, congrats. This, man, this man's going to have a baby in nine months. All right. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, we all know how that goes. All right. The thing about it is, when I was a youth pastor, I, I spent six years being a youth pastor. And, you know, I was never full-time ministry. Um, well, I was, but, you know, not in that capacity. It's very hard for a man and a woman like Jermaine and Amber to, to do what they have to do. But they are committed to our youth. And our youth can honestly attest to that. They are committed to them. They're committed to you and, and anything else you need in that capacity. And I think that God has sent the right people at the right time to lead that ministry. So thank you so much. All right. The next one we're going to uh, have come up is Aaron. Aaron, come on up. I see you speaking. Hey, baby. Uh, Aaron has a heart for kids. Um, but I, I again say, and I've been saying this ever since you know she's been doing this, that this is a temporary job for Aaron. Um, she is uh, looking forward to the day that a, a man or woman of God We'll take that position. All right. <laughs> so here, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over. Here you go. Is it in prep by Kish? Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. No, I am completely passionate about our kids here at Splat Overflow. They are awesome, awesome kids. I have been so blessed to teach them the last two years. It's been my pleasure. Um, I did want to highlight just a few quick things. Um, it's hard to follow Jermaine. He had such an awesome speech, and I did not have that, but you did a good job. But I did want to highlight a few things that we did last year just to show you guys how awesome these kids are here at Overflow. At the top there was our Easter Sunday. They had a blast learning about the resurrection. Um, over to the left there is our VBS. That was our first VBS we had ever done. I had no idea what I was doing, but it was a great, great time. We had about 50 kids show up. We had three kids <coughs> ask Jesus into their heart during that week. Yeah. Praise God for that. Um, so it was a wonderful, wonderful time here at VBS last summer. Um, there at the, to the far right was our truck or treat. Again, our first time we had ever tackled one of those. And we learned a lot that night. We learned that we need a lot more candy than we had. <laughs> and a lot more hot dogs. So we had about a little over 200 people come to the trunk or tree. So that was amazing, amazing time for us to be a light in this community. People that didn't even know we existed down here. So that was a wonderful time. And the bottom was our play, our Christmas play this last <laughs> December that most of y'all remember. <laughs> We had an eventful play, of course. You never know what kids are going to say or they're going to dance across the stage or whatever. But it was a great, great time, and we really had a good time with our kids at Christmas. But looking forward to 2017, I'm super excited what God's going to do with Splash Kids. I think he's going to make all these events, again, even better than they were last year. And I'm just super excited to see what he's going to do and how we can expand on what we did last year and make it even better. As far as in the back, I just want to kind of, if you don't know what we do in Kids Church, it's not games. It, today they are having a movie day. I do let them do that since I had to come in here on the fifth Sunday. But we have a lesson. It's called The Faith Case, if you want to look it up online. And they, or they are digging deep into God's Word just like you guys are. So I'm excited to share that with them. And I just something I want to... Um, just kind of challenge the parents with this 2017. Every day at the end of class, I'm going to give them this sheet right here. 
And this is a sheet that explains what we've done in Sunday, on Sunday's class. And it is something that you guys can go home and talk to your kids about. Test me on this. I want y'all to test me and make sure I'm doing my job in there. So go home, ask them what they learned, ask them what their verse was about. Just kind of question them at the dinner table, you know, when you're looking for something to talk about for the day, when they're just saying, oh, I had a good day, and they just stop. <laughs> ask them some questions. What'd you learn Sunday? What'd you talk about in class? So I would really appreciate if you guys would help me, you know, throughout the week, Monday through Saturday, talk to your kids about what we're talking about in Splash Kids. I would love for them to explain to you themselves what they're learning, because um, not to be a bragging mom, but... I was just so excited like, on Wednesday night. Um, we had a new little boy in class. I'm not going to pick on them. but um, And I started to tell the Bible story. And Logan, just out of nowhere, explained the entire Bible story before I could even read it to him. And this was the, something that he learned. I remember when he was in the pre-K class, like the three to five class at church. He learned it. And he's remembered it all this time. And I just think, you know, kids are sponges. They'll hear it one time, and they're going to know it. So having that foundation in there is just so critical. And I'm just so excited to see what God's going to do in 2017 in there. So I appreciate your help and look forward to teaching your kiddos. Thank you. My wife is awesome, I'm just saying. <laughs> but she really does have a heart for, for young children. She really does have a heart for kids. And as she rushes off to go back make sure everything's okay. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says direct your children in the right path and when they're older they will not leave you. I believe that holds true for our youth group. I believe that holds true for our children's ministry. It's not something that we take lightly. This is something that we plan and pour into um, Jermaine and Amber. They have a specific lesson they, they're looking at and, and go by every single, every single week. So uh, it's, it's an awesome thing. I would love to see this room full of youth age kids, wouldn't you? I would love to see every chair filled, as Jermaine was saying. I would see every, this, this whole place just hopping with youth because that is the next generation. That are the next preachers and pastors and evangelists. They are the next people. We have to train them up in the way, in the right way. It's our goal that we provide the best experience we possibly can for our young Christ followers. I want to spend the rest of our time together this morning talking about the future for us, for Overflow Church, for the adults and for the kids. But Overflow Church, specifically, what I want to talk more about is that vision statement, is those, those three things that I gave you earlier. Continue to, to make disciples, broaden the mission, and establish deeper roots in the community. God's purpose ultimately, is that none shall perish. Amen? That's why He sent His Son, Jesus, into this world to, to die for our sins so that none would perish. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 says, But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away in a terrible no with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. The earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. So, where do we stand in all of this? Where do we stand in God's future plans? We have to make a choice, number one. We have to make a choice for Jesus Christ. We have to say yes to Jesus. Because in the end, everything will be destroyed. Everything will be gone. But those who have accepted Him as personal Lord and Savior. But for those who uh, are, are saying yes to Jesus and say, Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. Those people will be with God. And the Bible says that we'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I believe that 100%. Do you? And I'm looking forward to that day. And it's not that I want to throw away my life that God's given me. No, not at all. I want to use every ounce of this life that He's given me. Every day of this existence, of this place here to broaden the span, if you will, for Jesus Christ. So how can we do this as a church? 
Number one, we're going to continue to make disciples. When I was called into the ministry, God said to me, and I remember this specifically because he's had to remind me, your purpose is to make disciples. That's what he told me. I remember it vividly. Your purpose is to make disciples. And so I look up the verse in Matthew chapter 25 or 26. I can't remember which one it is right now. And it says, go into all the world and make disciples. And so I said, okay, God, I'll do that. I'll make disciples. So we're going to continue that. But when he helped us start this church, he gave me this vision statement, this mission statement, if you will. And it's refresh, refuel, refine. If you've been coming here at any length of time and you stand at the coffee or you get a water, you look up and you see it on the wall out there. In fact, you see it in a lot of places if you're looking hard enough. Refresh, refuel, refine. I want to reaffirm this today. What does it mean? Well, God refreshes us by us coming into the house every week and we worship Him. We, he refreshes us. When the band is up here, the band is hot, I'm telling you. When the band is up here and they're leading us to worship, that's when God, you have a chance for God to refresh you. That's when things happen. That's when, man, I'm telling you, that's when it all happens. You take your junk and bring your junk in here, and, and you hear the words, and you feel the music, and you know the presence of God is here. That's the refreshing part. We move on to the refuel part. It's the spiritual level. We have several things in this church about refueling yourselves. That's where the Word of God comes in. Whether it's through preaching on Sunday mornings, it is the midweek gathering we have on Wednesday nights at 7. Or it's the girl time ministry that we have every third Friday. This is a commercial. Every third <laughs> Friday of the month. These times refuel you. If you haven't been, if ladies, if you haven't been to our girl time ministry, I have heard nothing but success mm -hmm. from this. If you've been there, you can attest to it. Because they come back changed. Erin, she comes home just refreshed and refueled. She's ready to go. So I will every third Friday night, every month, we're going to be right here. And Tanya Rhodes leads that for us. So thank you, Tanya. Give her a hand. <laughs> this statement is the life when you're not at church. Refined really doesn't have anything to do with why you're in the four walls here. It has everything to do with who you are outside. Just like the Bible talks about refining gold and refining silver. You've got to be put through the test. Well, as Jermaine said, the test doesn't come when you're sitting in church. The test comes on Tuesday morning when you're tempted to say something or do something that you're not supposed to do. It's the refining part. You're being refined. And God's pulling out the imperfections in your life and the impurities. So we're going to stick to that mission statement. We're going to continue to make disciples, and that's not going away. That's our purpose of this ministry. The second part of our vision statement that I'm talking about today is one of that I'm most excited about today, I think. And that's broaden the mission. The end of last year, I felt that our church had a deeper calling to missions as a whole. And for a long time, I thought to myself, you know, we're just, we're not that big. We're not big enough to make a difference. You know, I can't believe I thought that way. It's a shame on me. <laughs> we're not that big enough to make a difference. We're not like this church down the road or that church down the road. We don't have a million dollar budget, whatever. But what we are giving, we can use for the mission of God. Amen? Amen. What we are blessed with, we can still, I don't care if it's a dollar, mm -hmm. we can still use it to bless the mission. What do I, want to, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to challenge you each and every month. Each and every month, I want you to really think about the mission. Now, I'm talking about supporting missionaries. I'm talking about bringing them in and letting them preach and letting them speak. And we bless them. Every month from now, from February on, we're going to have a mission Sunday. And that's going to be at the end of the month. At the very last day of the month, every single month, it's going to be Mission Sunday. We're going to take up a special offering every month for missions. And that's going to be just the other ushers coming back down one more time just to take up a special missions offering. I believe we are in a time where we, if we want to grow in our giving, if we want to grow in our relationship with Christ, it's going to have to be a give till it hurts type thing. And so that's where I'm challenging you, and that's where I'm challenging myself. Every month we're going to start giving a mission Sunday an extra push. Well, where does it go? Well, there's a couple things we're going to pour into and move into. The number one thing we're going to move into is, is the Gideon ministry. 
the Gideon ministry came, comes in here. Fred Hagee comes in here every year, and he tells us about putting Bibles in people's hands. As a matter of fact, he's scheduled to come in April. And I'm looking forward to his coming because when he comes, he tells awesome stories about putting Bibles in people's hands. So we're going to be God's hands and feet extended, and we're going to put Bibles in people's hands through the Gideon ministry. And so we're going to support them monthly. The other su support we're going to do monthly is the Chi Alpha College Ministry. As Jermaine said, you know, what that, the edge, about the edge is getting youth uh, right above the edge to step into the edge, step into the abyss of adulthood. That's what it's all about. And so when you go to college, I'm sure the statistics are more, are, are, are worse than we think. When you go to college, they step away from God. Chi Alpha, they, they are a ministry to the colleges around the Piedmont Triad right here. They're just getting started around the Piedmont Triad. So we're going to bless them monthly and support them monthly. If you need more information about those, please come see me after church. As far as the involvement of the mission field that we can do, what about our hands, getting our hands dirty? What about getting our hands and our feet dirty and doing all these things, going after the community? There is so much more ministry we can do outside these four walls. We're going to start to take some missions trips. Now, they may start local, and they may be only one day, but they're missions trips nonetheless. Look forward to, to hearing about that in the future. We're going to do some great things here at, community, at, at Overflow Church. And the, number, the third and final thing is to establish deeper roots into the community. Well, what do I mean by that? Now, that has a lot to do with missions, and they kind of hold hand in hand. But I believe it's God's will for this church to grow. Don't you? I believe God's will for this church to expand and to grow in His way and in His timing. He's not going to grow us if we're not ready. So we need to pray that He makes us ready. Well, what does that mean? It means whatever comes next, we're going to be ready for. Because we are protected and shielded by the Holy God. Amen? Amen. It's my goal this year to start a major search for a building. Now, this place is truly a blessing. I mean, how many people say this is, place is a blessing? But I believe we can grow, and we're on the potential to grow, if we had that space, more space for people to sit, and obviously the chairs. As you can look around and see, man, we're, we're getting there. And I think we're full now, and I think we're past full. Amen. Thank you. Will you, number two things, join me in prayer every single day for a place to go. A permanent place that we can call home and establish those deeper roots. And number two, I'm only one man with two eyes. Be on the lookout. Help me on the lookout. Huh? We need a kitchen. Thank you, Rhonda. We need a kitchen for Rhonda. Be on the lookout. We we need a place. We need a place to go. We need a place to grow. Amen. And sometimes God says grow, and sometimes He says slow. Sometimes He says no, and sometimes. All right, Doctor. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was going. So that's what we're, we're, at, we're at full capacity right now. We need to grow. We need to do that thing. We need to, we need to move. Also, uh, keeping in that mindset of community. Um, how many people are on Facebook? Man. Awesome. Every week, I've, for the past six months, well, let, let me just go back to where it all started. Um, I was here on a Wednesday night once, and I was by myself. <coughs> And I just felt like I just needed to get on this altar and, and pray. You know, this is not much. This is just some plywood and some metal. But to me, it's the altar of God. Hallelujah. And so I, I just felt like, man, get to that altar and pray. Everybody just feel like that sometimes? Man, just let me know. I'll come let you in. But I was here and I was praying. I said, God, give me something fresh. I just need something new. And so I, I, I went home and I went to sleep and I woke up in the morning. And God says, make videos. I'm like, what? Them. But no, it wasn't. He says, make videos and put them on Facebook. And so, I've been doing that. Anybody seen the videos we've been making from our house? And, and, and it's totally stupid and silly sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, Tuesday night at 1 a.m., going, i got to get this video finished. It's Wednesday morning. <laughs> so, what I am challenging myself to do is not necessarily make weekly videos anymore, but to make videos that are purposeful. And maybe a little bit longer. Maybe 
we'll put them on YouTube. And, and everything that we do goes on YouTube. Every service that we record, it goes on YouTube. If you miss the service, it goes on YouTube. And all you got to do is type Overflow Church NC or Overflow Church Welcome, and it comes right up on YouTube. Man, you can watch the service if you missed it. I think that's awesome. So it's my duty to challenge myself in the digital world to make more interesting content when it comes down to that so we can reach more people. You know, one of our videos reached like 2,100 people. To me, that's, this, I mean, there's people out there doing millions of views a day, but I did 2,100 and I'm praising God for that. You know, that's an awesome thing. So we're going to make more healthy content. They may not be every week, but we're just going to be more deeper content. That's a part of the vision. Also, speaking of the digital world, I'm proud to announce today that starting in February, we have a brand new website. Let's put that up there. This is a bit of, yeah, that's awesome. This is what it looks like. I'm liking the clapping today. This is just what the homepage is going to look like. Obviously, there's more about us, the events. This is something that you can share with uh, someone else and say, well, I need more about your church. We'll go to overflowchurchnc.com. And then we have a website now. But it's kind of like lax, you know what I'm saying? It's like a rotten tree, you know, it just needs to be cut down and plant a new one. So that's what we're doing. Um, I have been working on this thing for like three months. I am not a website builder, okay? But I've been, me and Aaron have been working on this thing, and it will be ready to launch February 1st. So go check out the new website. There's links to watch all of our videos on the website. Uh, there's links to YouTube, links to our Facebook page. Um, if it snows or if it does any kind of inclement weather, you can find information here or on channel 12, all right? We're moving up. All right. <laughs> so that's, that's the new website. It's going to be really cool. The last thing I want to discuss today uh, is something that's a little bit in a, in a business mindset, if you can kind of bear with me here. Um, in our Constitution and bylaws, and we'll talk more about this on Wednesday if you choose to join us at our business meeting right here at 7 o'clock. That's also a commercial. Um, <laughs> It's not sponsored by anybody. But um, <laughs> if we're going to do deeper roots in the community, we're going to have to start getting better at some, some of the stuff. In our Constitution and Bylaws, it states that when major decisions happen for this church, that it is up to myself and the board to make that decision. Now, these are four people. And I understand all that, and that's all well and good. But I believe that we should be more of a a responsive church, if you know what I'm saying. We should have carried the load a little bit better. So we are amending our Constitution and bylaws to say when we have a major decision, and a major decision will be determined by myself and the board, but when we have a major decision, it will come to a vote through the members of this church. I believe we should be a democracy. I believe we should be transparent, more transparent than we have been. Um, not that we're hiding anything. I've always said, uh, if you have a question about any kind of finances or anything, 15 minutes, Yvonne can get you an answer. 15 minutes. Our books are always open, ain't they, Yvonne? I'm not, I'm not Josh. All right? They're always open. You can always see what we're doing. We can always see what we're paying, what we're bringing in. This is a 501 c three. Not now, Billy. You don't have to look at it now. <laughs> so I, sorry, Billy. You know I love you, man. <laughs> But it's a 501c3. You know, we're a nonprofit organization. Everything is open. Everything is clear. Also, on a financial standpoint, uh, just say, for example, let's just say, for example, that we found a piece of land that we want to build a church on. Well, that's a vote for the church to decide. If, if we're in Timbuktu and say, I'm not driving there, well, my votes no. Uh, you know, it's a responsive. Two-thirds of the votes count. That's what we're going to put into the... Constitution bylaws. Also, on a financial level, if the church gets a building, let's just say years down the road we get a place to be and we need a new sound system and that thing's going to cost $20,000. Well, anything over $15,000, that's a vote. We need to vote on church. And you want to become a member here and have a say and have a voice. This is the card you fill out. It's right there in the front pocket seat. This is your card. I will say this. To become a member... We're going to, we, we tested the waters a little bit last month, uh, or last year, and we had a class. Who attended the class? Man, it was, it was great. It was an awesome class. That was, you didn't know, but you were in a test situation. 
You are the beta. We're going to continue uh, every three months to have a new members class. If you want to join this church. Now, if you're already a member of this church, you already fill out the card, you're clear, you're good. You don't have to do anything else. You're, you've got a voice, you've got a vote. Uh, but if you're brand new here and you want to be a part of this church, and we'd love to have you, it's myself and Lonnie. We teach that class. Lonnie does a history lesson, which he's an awesome historian about our church. And, and I do a little goofy things. I don't know what I do. But uh, we're going to meet every three months. If you want to be a part of this church, sign up. But also, I will encourage you. Don't only sign up and fill out the card. Find a place to serve. Find a place where you can fit in. I'm sure. I mean, don't be ashamed. I mean, I'm sure John and Dixie would love to have some people else on the clean team. Amen? Uh, I'm sure that the greeters would like to switch out here and there. Man, be a greeter. Shake a hand before you come in. You just got to show up 15 minutes early. That's all. That's it. I'm sure Bo would like to have more ushers on his team. Amen? I'm sure Brad and Amber would love to have more musicians up here. And so that being said, we have a challenge and we have a purpose. That purpose is that none shall perish. Amen? I think this is the longest I've ever preached. <laughs> Let's all stand. Let's have our music come back up. I want to go back to our friend Habakkuk for a moment. Habakkuk is three chapters long. Not very long. Habakkuk was a man who was frustrated with God. And I've been frustrated with God. Sometimes about this church. Sometimes about my personal life. And sometimes we'll say, God, why? I don't understand. But he always, just like it says in 2 Peter, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. What does that mean? It means God has no concept of linear time. It means that time doesn't make a difference to God. We live by the clock. We live, get up at 6, do this at 8. We live by, whether you realize it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, you live by the clock. And that being said, we are all about God's clock. Amen. And God's vision. So that's what we want to do today. I don't want to have any, um, miss any opportunity this morning or any time we meet to make sure that your life is where it's supposed to be. Your life is where God wants it to be. As our prayer team approaches and comes up, I want to ask you this morning, is everything well with you? Is everything okay with you? And if it's not, I would love to pray with you. Do you even know Jesus Christ? Do you know Him? And if you don't, it's time to get to know Him before it's too late. We're not promised another moment. Amen? If you choose Jesus this morning, it's just a simple prayer. And each and every one of these people will lead you into that prayer. We're going to sing a song. We're going to pray. Let's do that now.